Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hannah. On my channel, I make motherhood and lifestyle content. Today's video is going to be a DIY tutorial style video for three different Easter decoration projects. Most of the supplies that you need for these projects are fairly cheap and I will try to keep a list somewhere either on the video or in the description box of the prices of everything and where I got the stuff. There were a couple things for a couple of the projects that were a little bit expensive, but still not too bad. Um, and I'm sure they can be found cheaper elsewhere. Two of the projects are also rather easy to make. The third one is a little bit more involved, but it's still not too bad. These three decorations were inspired by a few different pins that I had seen floating around on Pinterest. And I will try to link them in the description box as well and possibly pop up pictures of them um, as we're going along. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first decoration. This first project is based off of these two beaded string things with little like appliques at the end and I chose to do the tassel. So here is what you will need. Jute or twine, an embroidery needle, wooden beads, scissors, and cross applique, hot glue, and a drill to put a hole in the cross applique. I had my husband help me out with that. So the first thing I did was pulled a pretty long piece of the twine and I kept it folded in half um, so that way I could string the two ends of the jute into the hole of the cross and I kept the loop open and then I put the ends through the loop and pulled it tight so that way it would be connected to the jute without having to put a bead or hot glue on it. Next I started to plan out the order of the beads that I wanted. At first I was trying to make it look like it was random and then I wanted to just choose random ones but then I thought that just didn't really look right so then I just started putting the beads on there and I just kind of came up with a pattern um, as I was going I didn't really pre-plan it because I just thought that it would look too thought out so what I came up with I thought I really liked and it looked really nice I also used the embroidery needle to help me get the beads onto the jute um, I could have done it without it but it made it a lot easier with the embroidery needle so after I did that, I tied three knots at the end, at the top of those beads, and I put the first one as close as possible to, the, to that bead, and then the next two knots that I did, I put on top. I slid them down on top of that previous knot that I had just done. I also left the tails of the jute on there. I did not cut them off because this is what's going to help us attach the tassel onto the string of beads. So to make the tassel I just wound um, the jute around my hand several times. I didn't really count how many times but I just kind of felt for the thickness and when I thought it was thick enough I went ahead and cut the jute off and then slid the entire roll of jute off of my hand and cut it in half at the top of the loops. Then I opened up the tassel and laid it flat and then with the string of beads the two ends I split open and laid the tassel in between them and then tied it as tight as I could to the string of beads. Then I gathered the tassel all together and finagled with it a little bit to get it kind of laid out how, how I wanted it. Then I cut an extra piece of jute and tied it around the tassel with a short end and a long end. With the short end, I just tied it as tight as possible, and then with the long end, I wrapped it around the tassel and around the end of the shorter end of the string itself um, to keep it from unraveling. Even though I had tied it, it just made it a little bit extra secure. So then I just kept wrapping it around until it was fairly short but still long enough to get the embroidery needle on it and I just tied knots with it and then I threaded the embroidery needle down underneath all of the loops we had been making around the tassel. Once that was secure I cut the ends of the tassel to make it even at the bottom and here is how it turned out. The second 
project is inspired by this shabby chic um, burlap cross tied around a frame type situation. Here's what you will need. A frame, some burlap ribbon, itty bitty LED twinkle lights, some scissors, and a hot glue gun. So first I started by unwrapping the frame and taking the back and the glass, in this case it was plastic, out and then pushing the prongs of the frame to the front so that way they're not sticking out. Then I took this really pretty burlap with ribbon, some lacy ribbon in the middle, um, and I hot glued this to the back of the frame with it coming over to the front. So basically if you just lay down the ribbon on the table, um, upside down, and then place the frame upside down as well, you can just hot glue the end onto the back of the frame. to do is pinch in the ribbon to make it kind of gather up at the top third. I did this on the front side but I also wanted to do it on the back side so that way it would be even. So I just kind of like eyeballed a third down and just put some hot glue on the back of the burlap and folded in the edges. When it was all pinched in I um, hot glued the front and the back ribbons together. And then I do the same exact thing horizontally this time, right on top of where I had pinched in, so a third of the way down. And it's a lot easier to watch me do this on the second time, so I'll let you just watch and not have to listen as well. Once all of that was secure, I took the little itty bitty LED sh string lights and glued them into the back of the frame where the glass would normally sit. And I always strung the string of lights in the middle of the cross, the ribbon cross. And my husband gave me a little cookie there <laughs> as I was working. Um, but I always, 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 whenever I was passing around the cross I went through the front and the back of the ribbon so that way it wouldn't be seen on either the front or the back. It would just be sandwiched in the middle. I also strung the lights around the actual cross itself and again I just went in and around um, the cross always in between the front and the back of the burlap ribbon. And then I struggled for a little bit to put the batteries into the pack, um, but once I got it, I turned it on and here's how it turned out. And I really think it's super pretty. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of the prettiest ones of these three different projects. All right. 
right, so this third project is a little bit more involved and it's based off of this empty tomb rock garden. So you'll need a terracotta planter plate, a miniature flower pot, a flower styrofoam thing, <laughs> some moss, some floral moss, a bag of little pebbles and rocks, some twigs from outside. These nature tubes that you can find at Joann's, that's where I found them. I had to get two so I could get a sheep and a lion and I actually had to use a ram instead of a sheep because that's all I could find was a ram so that's all right but um yeah. A rock or a stone, some jute or twine, scissors, some hot glue, and some gray apple barrel craft paint. So I started off by placing the little plant styrofoam thing onto the terracotta plate and then envisioning where the little flower pot will go. And I decided to actually put the pot into the styrofoam. So I kind of scored the styrofoam of where I needed to cut it but then I had to pull out a pocket knife and dig into the styrofoam to be able to fit the pot into the styrofoam. So when you do this, please be careful because you will need something sharp to dig out the styrofoam and it's not necessarily the most easy thing to do. So definitely be very careful when you're doing this. Once I got the pot to fit into the styrofoam, I placed the styrofoam onto the little plate thing and I realized I needed to shave off some of the back of the styrofoam so that way it could sit flat against the pot instead of sticking out in the middle of the planter plate. Um, so to get this attached to the plate, I decided to use Mod Podge, um, but I definitely needed to use hot glue. I think I show it in a little bit, um, but yeah. Both hot glue and Mod Podge are going to be your friend while doing this. I also um, put the shavings of the styrofoam thing on to the plate so I could build up the moss and not have to use too much moss. Um, but yeah, I just kind of glued it on there and piled the little scraps of styrofoam onto the glue. So to paint the little pot um, gray, I used a paper towel because I forgot that I would need a paintbrush. So I just kind of poured some paint onto a paper towel and dabbed it all over the pot. It worked out well, but if you're doing this, you might want to use a paintbrush instead. Once the little pot was painted, I went ahead and hot glued the pot into the styrofoam and on the plate itself just so it would be a little bit more secure than just sitting there. This next step is fairly simple but a little bit tedious. You'll want to put some hot glue down onto the plate and then take little bits of the floral moss at a time and just lay it onto the hot glue and make sure it sticks really good and just keep going back and forth from the hot glue to the moss, hot glue to the moss, and cover up everywhere on the plate. I left a little bit of an opening um, and kind of in front of the pot so I could place the little rocks or pebbles in front of the pot so it would look like, um, it was like a cave entrance or something like that because it is the empty tomb that we're making. gotten all of the moss on the plate I took the lion and the lamb or ram in my case and um, kind of positioned them of how I wanted them and then I just hot glued them into the moss so <laughs> I just put hot glue on their little feet and pushed really hard into the moss 
Then I took the stone and hot glued it onto the little flower pot and into the moss as well and I also put more moss behind the rock just so it would have something to kind of lean against instead of being free floating. Alright, so the next day because my camera battery died, um, I just finished up. So I placed the rocks in front of the little planter or in front of the tomb and then I created three crosses. Um, one bigger one and two smaller ones. On the bigger one, I used a branch or a twig that had like a little plant bud on it to go at the top to kind of symbolize a rose. I thought it would be really cute and have a lot of meaning there. To make the crosses, I just broke off a longer piece for the um, vertical part of the cross and a shorter piece for the horizontal part of the cross. The biggest cross, I also decided to add some twine to it um, where the two pieces of twigs meet. So I started with a little bit of hot glue right in the middle of it, of where they meet, and then I just wrapped twice um, diagonally each way around the cross and then hot glued it in place. And I thought that just made it look really cute and added a special touch to it. crosses were all made and set with the glue, I stuck them into the styrofoam that's holding the pot um, underneath the moss and yeah I just jabbed them in there as far as they would go and um, I placed the biggest cross in the back and then put the two little, littler crosses in front on either side of the big cross and this is how it turned out. three projects. I hope you guys give them a try and enjoy them as much as I do. All three of them are definitely unique to each other. I don't have a favorite from these three different projects. Um, I will say though that I think this one is the prettiest and this one is like the coolest like trendiest type and then this one is just like I don't know, really stinking neat and like very crafty. I really do enjoy all three of these projects. So I hope you guys give them a try and that you guys will enjoy them as much as I do. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you are notified every time I put out a new video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.